concept of free choice is rendered completely nugatory by the idea of a supernatural invigilation that pre-exists you and that has demands. Oh, no, makes, or, the, can, but the whole point is you it's not nugatory because you can choose to fulfill the demands or not fulfill the demands. That's what free will means. How will but, you know? What? How will you know? You, whether you fulfill the demands or not? Because that's what I already mean. People have unintended consequences. And okay. find out that they are doing yes. something they didn't think they were doing. Um, that's, what, that's what the free choice principle means. It's not a yes, no question. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry guys, uh, waiting in line. We only have uh, time for three more questions. So I apologize for you guys waiting in line, but maybe you can get them in the book signing. I have a question for Mr. Hitchens, and I hope uh, Rabbi Wolke will be able to answer the same question. I would contend that religion is not the root of evil, or most of the evil in the world, but that power is. And I'd like both of you to respond, starting with you. Well, some people say, um, studying Nietzsche usually, that if you take religion away, faith away, all that's left is the will to power. But I think that simply replaces the same question in a different way. If you look at the efforts of the Imams and the Ayatollahs and the rabbis to order our morality, uh, to try and intervene in our politics, to run our education system, uh, to have views on morality, all the rest of it. Ask yourself, in which world are they seeking power, this one or the next? It looks very much like this one to me. And so what I'm supposed to believe, or take seriously, is the idea that someone else, who I know is only a primate like me, has access to information that I don't have, and can tell me what to do, not just because he's stronger than me, but because God has empowered him to do so. And I'll just tell you something right now. I don't believe a word of that. I don't have a minute of my life to spend being pushed around by someone who says he's an errand for one eye. And that's the, that's the dirtiest and nastiest and most, most ruthless and totalitarian form that the will to power has ever taken. There's no tyranny like the theocratic. Nothing so absolute. And it is not just that they, they claim they'll keep bullying you after you're gone. And, um, well, we I hope we'll emancipate ourselves from that nonsense. But the churches wouldn't be as strong as they are now, and simply making insipid remarks about good work and soup kitchens, if they hadn't for centuries tyrannized and terrified them, and bullied them and extorted them the power that built those churches, that, that filled those galleries, that installed those uh, Holy Roman Emperors and, and Imams and all the rest of it. That's what gives them their power now, is the residual of the absolute power they used to have. Now they're free to talk. Because about. now they're free to talk about good words. Oh, I thought I was they... free to talk now. Okay. Yeah. Because I mean, look. In part, yes. The world was the world was a sewer, an awful sewer before the advent of the monotheistic faiths. Rome before Christianity was a far worse place than Rome after Christianity. Greece, which Mr. Hitchens, you know, the the Greece of the philosophers of Athens was a terrible place for most. Slavery was enshrined. The only organized operations. Um, opposition to slavery that ever arose was in Christianity in the Western world. So, yes, power is a power is a problem. So is the opposition to power a problem? But ultimately, evil doesn't arise from power. Evil arises from the sort of recalcitrant, crooked, good and evil um, nature of human beings. We are all an amalgam. There's good in us, and there's bad in us. So when we have power, we use it unevenly. When we have persuasive power, we use it unevenly. And, and it's not the power itself. It's uh, the intentions and the uneven actions behind it. And my contention is that religion makes that somewhat better. Not perfect, but somewhat better. All right, my uh, question is really for both of you, but uh, I understand we're short on time. So try and make it quick. I actually had a different question, but the free will thing is really interesting. So I'd like to follow up on that. Uh, it seems to me that there's a difference between random action and free action. And uh, if we do in fact have free will, that would imply that we are violating causality. Because uh, you must be following, uh, in a deterministic universe, every action has a cause. But if we do in fact have free will, that means you are initiating an action that does not have a cause. It's a causal, which implies something beyond the natural law. Uh, is that correct? Yes. <laughs> yes, that, that, 
that suits me very I mean, the theology that I know best is the Christian one. The Muslim one follows it in many respects. It says that evil arises from man's rebellion against God, which must therefore be, in some sense, a voluntary act. Um, and even the devil, as we know, used to be an angel. And after all, once you start creating supernatural entities, you'll always have to find yourself adding another one. Evil can only be explained transient by the evil one. It must be a Satan too, so add on another supernatural thing. Uh, at least he said that he'd rather reign in hell than serve in hell, according to him. And uh, I agree with him. My answer, my answer would be that Mr. Hitchens, that Mr. Hitchens' erudite by way into Milton tells you that he has no answer to your question. So yes, I agree with your question. Excuse me, I thought that was a rather better answer. <laughs> you said nothing about causality and the ability, and the ability to no, cause from sorry, sacredness. The, the, the Christian theology, the I first guess, cause, he didn't ask about the first, the the first cause is a rebellion against God. That's the cause. He understands that in Christian theology, people believe in an uncaused cause because God gives free will. The question is, if you don't believe there's a supernatural entity, how do you get cause from randomness? That was the fact. Milton doesn't answer that. That only leads to an infinite regression. I mean, you have to say, well, who caused that first no, cause? No, no, no. no. Who, who, who created the creator? Who designed the design it gets absolutely no That's not the question. Guys, it's, it's gracious of you to applaud, but actually let me let me seek to undercut that intention by telling you that what I understood the question to be was to say that there's randomness in the world doesn't give you free will. It just says that there are random actions. Free will is a caused action that is free. And to say that there's randomness doesn't give you free will. The question is where do you get free will? Well with respect say that randomness was the cause of free will. I said that given the amount of randomness and uncertainty, I think the determinist position is a very hard one to put. I'm sure I was correct about that. That was that you don't but I absolutely it. never mind saying this kind of thing twice. Until <laughs> okay. you all got it right on that. The determinist position seems to be fatally weakened by that objection, the objection of the, the power of uncertainty and randomness. The, the idea that all is decided in advance doesn't seem to be a very Thank you. All right. Um, well, I was just wondering, um, either of you, I guess, really touched on this thing, something I was wondering about. Um, just from personal experience, um, my grandparents were Holocaust survivors. Two of them uh, survived Auschwitz. I guess, Rabbi, this is uh, more for you. Is, um, as soon as they got into America, neither one of them have stepped foot in the temple um, until the day they died. And in your opinion, um, how does a god kind of justify something so, well, this is, this is, I mean, in some ways it's a good question, and it is the, obviously the hardest question, I think, for religions to deal with, although, for me at least, the question of the Holocaust is not the hardest question. The question of a baby born with a disease or an earthquake is a harder question in a way because you can say the Holocaust was the product of human evil. Um, but what about the things that God does or our God caused? And, here, there are lots and lots of uh, religious responses. I will, I'll touch on two. It would be a much longer conversation, but here at least are two. One is, it depends what you think the world is for. If you believe that the world is in order that we grow in soul, then good and evil in this world or bad and good have to be random. Because if, in fact, every time you did good, you got good, every time you did bad, you were, got bad, then everybody would be like a rat in a skinner box. You would do good all the time, but only so you could be rewarded. So you understand that there's a certain randomness and pain that is sort of built into the structure of the world, and that that's the only way that you can get what Keats said, you know, that it takes uh, in order to, to create a soul, what a world of pains and trouble it takes to create. The kind of soul that, in theory, religion wants you to create in this world, which I think is the human, it's the human mission. The second part of that is, that God created a world of material. There's spirit in it, but it's material. And material, by its very nature, is um, something that <coughs> suffers, decays, dies, is imperfect. And that's part of the reason, I believe, why religious people have an intuition that this world isn't all. Because there's something that we believe is transcends the material. And that's something that we can only imagine, but we can't exist in until we leave this world. It's a much, I, I wish I had a lot more time to answer it, because as I said, this is the central religious question, but for the moment I'm going to leave it at that. Well, look, um, one, one advantage to being an atheist is you don't spend your time asking stupid questions. 